Hi, I'm Haley with Nye House Education Center. In this video, we're going to walk through how to complete a week's worth of lessons for the Reading Readiness Advanced Schedule. Just keep in mind for this video, we're going to pretend that I am a teacher in a classroom and I've already completed two weeks of the Reading Readiness Advanced Schedule and I'm planning for my third week of instruction. First, what we want to do is think about our reading routine for Reading Readiness Advanced Schedule. There are five components in the Reading Readiness Advanced Schedule. Letter recognition for five minutes, phonological awareness for five minutes, a multisensory letter introduction for 10 minutes, handwriting for five minutes, and oral language for five to eight minutes. When I'm thinking about planning lessons, I need to think about a few things. First of all, where are my students now and where do I want them to be? I need to think about what I already know, what they can do, and what are my goals for them. So if we are in the third week of the advanced schedule, that means two things. Number one, it means they've already moved out of the initial schedule. And in order to move out of the initial schedule, students need to be able to sequence all of the capital letters onto that blue mat in under two minutes. And they also need to successfully segment a three phoneme word. So I know that the majority of my students can already do that if I'm in the advanced schedule. The second thing that they can do already is since we are in week three, of the advanced schedule, I'm in the multi-sensory letter introduction section of my manual. On the first page, it gives you the scope and sequence of the letters you're introducing. Usually we suggest about two letters per week. So if they've already done two weeks of instruction, that means they've covered four letters. We've done I, T, P, and N. So hopefully my students are very familiar with those letters. So that means this week, if I'm sticking with this pace and in introducing two letters, we're doing S, and A. Keep that in mind, S and A. So that's going to be my goal for my students. Um, also, if I'm thinking about goals, I want them to, we, we need to set a goal for each component. So letter recognition in the initial schedule, they can sequence and name all of the uppercase letters. But now that we're on the advanced schedule, we need to be thinking about the lowercase letters. So I'm going to set a goal that those letters they've already been introduced to, plus the two we're doing this week, that they can recognize those letters. For phonological awareness, that's all about sounds. I want my goal to be that they can start blending sounds together. This is going to be a really important precursor to them starting to decode words. For multisensory letter introduction, we already talked about we're going to introduce the letters S and A and those sound symbol correspondences with S and A. For handwriting, since we're concentrating on S and A this week, I want them to practice writing S and A. And then lastly, for oral language, I'm going to set up a goal that they will get through an oral language unit, and I can choose that unit. We'll go through that in a minute and also be able to do a story retelling. So now I've thought about where my students are, what they can already do, what my instructional goals are for my students. So now I need to think about actually sitting down and planning a week's worth of lessons. What am I going to do? Well, first you need to think about, are you going to plan vertically or horizontally? If you're planning vertically, you're planning up and down, meaning you'll plan all of Monday, all five components, then all of Tuesday, all five components, and so on and so forth. If you're planning horizontally, you'll plan an entire component Monday through Friday. So Monday through Friday of letter recognition, Monday through Friday of phonological awareness, and so on and so forth. For the purposes of this video, we're going to plan horizontally, and I'll show you how that works. In order to sit down and plan a week's worth of lessons, I need my manual and I need a blank lesson plan. I also, on this blank lesson plan, already written in are the five components and the time that you should spend on those. Remember, in this whole group reading readiness, we're following this schedule. We're not moving around, we're not bringing in our own activities, we're following this schedule. And we're getting the activities for each of those components from our read manual. So let's look how we do that. Since I already know that our goal for this week for multisensory letter introductions are S and A. I'm going to start there. That's going to help me build in the rest of my lesson plan. So here that's component three, multisensory letter introductions. If I'm introducing two in a week, I think it makes sense to do one on Monday and one on Wednesday. So let's start here with Monday. We're going to introduce S is pronounced S. I've written the page number. And then also here I've written the order that I'm going to go through in order to, order to do a multisensory letter introduction. I got this information from the manual. It tells you what you're doing. So if I turn to the multisensory letter introduction section of my book and I turn to the S page, which is page nine, it's going to tell me the order that I'm going to go in. So for example, first you're going to do shuffle the reading deck 
and give you the reading deck. Then you're going to do auditory visual discovery. Then you'll be adding your reading card for the sound, doing handwriting for the sound. And then you'll be doing your words to practice. In the words to practice, you have some regular words and advanced words. If you're confused about any of those procedures, at the very beginning of this section, we have all the procedures. You have the sky writing procedure or the practicing words procedure. Included in the practicing words, don't forget, are they're reading or decoding the words and they're spelling the words and then you're putting them on cards. So going back to our lesson plan, I have the order that I'm going to do things. We're going to do the reading deck, auditory visual discovery, add the letter to the reading deck, sky writing, words to practice, and add to word deck. So that's Monday, 10 minutes. I'm going to introduce that letter S is pronounced. We're going to review it again on Tuesday. I don't need to go through the entire process, but I do want to review my word deck, the words to practice, maybe do a little bit more of those words to practice. I could bring in some of the advanced words and go through the word deck again. On Wednesday, I'm going to repeat the process and introduce the letter A. So we'll go through reading deck, auditory visual discovery, add to the reading deck, skywriting words to practice, and add to the word deck. So that's for the letter A is pronounced A. Ah. Again, on Thursday, we'll review. We're only introducing two letters per week. That's a pretty typical pace. So on Friday, we'll review S and A. We'll go through the reading deck, words to practice for both, and the word deck. That's a good pace for our entire week of multisensory letter introductions. And like I said, I like to start with this component because it helps me then fill out the rest of my schedule. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plan handwriting because handwriting is going to go hand in hand with your multisensory letter introductions. It makes sense to practice the letter they're learning. So in your handwriting section, page one, you have all of the stroke descriptions, which will be very important for you. But then on page two, you have three activities that you can choose from, or you could bring in some activities from your own um, program that you have. So on Monday, when we're introducing S is pronounced I'm going to do sky writing and tracing with my students and then a trace and copy page on Tuesday. I'm going to follow the same pattern. On Wednesday, we'll do sky writing and tracing for A, and then on Thursday, we'll do trace and copy for A. Then on Friday, I want to see if my students can apply this handwriting knowledge in their own writing, so I'm going to have them write different words with S and A. Not thinking about spelling, thinking about how they're producing those letters, handwriting. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up here to letter recognition, and we're going to talk about thinking about what we've introduced this week and what we've already introduced. What are some good activities for letter recognition? I don't want to just pick at random out of the letter recognition section of my manual because that might not be moving towards my instructional goals. I want to pick what will help my students move towards my goals. Again, the goals this week are that students will recognize the lowercase letters for the letters that have already been introduced. So previous weeks it was I, T, P, and N, and this week we're doing S and A. So for day one, for Monday, I'm going to do an instant letter recognition chart for lowercase letters, which is activity 17. I think we only need about three minutes to do this. It shouldn't take the whole five minutes. And I'm going to do it for the letters I, T, P, and N, a review of the previous weeks. I can make that letter recognition chart myself. I can either fill in a blank one with a pen, or I can print it um, and do it technology-wise off of the Nyhaus website, the Reading Teachers Network. Then I'm going to do a beautiful music activity, which is activity 15 for two minutes. On Tuesday, since on Monday we learned the letter S, on Tuesday in letter recognition, I'm going to add S to my letter recognition chart. So again, I'll need to make new charts with I, T, P, N, and S, and then we can do the alphabet to a different tune for a few minutes. On Wednesday, I think it's going to be important to review and, and make sure students hold on to the knowledge they have of uppercase letters. So on Wednesday, I'm just going to do one activity for five minutes. We'll sequence the letters on that blue mat with uppercase just to make sure students hold on to that knowledge. Thursday, we're going to introduce the lowercase letter A to our letter recognition charts. The students learned it on Wednesday. So on Thursday, we're going to add that to our letter recognition charts. Again, I'll need to make this chart. I've written in which letters I want, and they can do beautiful music too. And then on Friday, as kind of a fun into our week, we're going to play yes or no, which is activity 14. And we're going to play with the letters I, T, P, N, S, and A, the lowercase letters. And I might just write those letters on a card, and that's how I would draw um, to see which letter we're playing with. So now I've planned a full week of letter recognition. I've planned a full week of multisensory letter introductions and a full week of handwriting. Now we need to plan phonological awareness and oral language. Let's look at phonological awareness. Remember that I said my goal for phonological awareness was that students can start blending sounds together so it will help them when they become decoders. 
So I want to choose activities from my um, reading readiness manual that will help me move towards that goal. Not random activities, but move towards that goal. And don't forget that we talked about, or I've written it here, per page 29 in your reading readiness manual, the phonological awareness section, you're not moving to activities starting on page 30 until after students have been introduced to 10 multisensory letter introductions. Are we at 10 yet? No, we're not. We're doing number five and six this week. So I'm going to stick to activities on the phonological awareness section from pages 22 through 28. Again, that information is on page 29 of your phonological awareness section. So thinking about that and my instructional goals for my students, on Monday, I think it will be good to review identifying initial sounds and final sounds, help them think about what sounds they need to blend. Then on Tuesday, we're going to do say it, move it cards where they can have manipulatives to think about the sounds and words. We'll do blending on Wednesday, say it, move it cards again on Thursday, and blending on Friday. So if I turn to my phonological awareness section of my book into these blending activities, there's no way we can get through all of these in one five minute section. So I'm gonna just, when I'm working through this with my students, take a pencil and mark where I leave off so that I know where to pick up the next time we do this activity. I also might indicate by circling the number if students really struggled with any of these examples so I can make sure to go back and repeat that activity with students next time. So you're not intended to get through this whole thing in a day, absolutely not. We're building the students' knowledge as we go. So now we've planned the first four components and all we need to do is oral language. And luckily this one's a little bit easier to plan. For oral language advanced schedule, we're going to do the oral language section on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. In the advanced schedule, it was the entire time, but now that, I'm sorry, in the initial schedule, it was the entire week. But now that we're on advanced, we're gonna do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I've selected a um, oral language unit from the reading readiness manual, and I've selected community helpers. This is on page 12 through 13. So in order to condense the learning into three days, this is how we've done it. We're going to do the naming and more naming sections on Monday, the describing section on Tuesday, and the things to think about and critical thinking sections on Wednesday. That leaves Thursday and Friday open for me to do story retelling. So I'm going to pull out my purple story retelling book and choose a story. And so I've chosen the story Adam's First Trip to the City, which is on page 13, and on Thursday, as the teacher, I will read the story and I will retell the story to students. Remember, this is when you have your little retelling cards and you flash the card to help them think about things that happen in the story. I will model a retell on Thursday. On Friday, I'll read the story again and students can retell using those cards. That will get us through a full week of oral language. You'll notice down here on the bottom that I put materials. Since in reading readiness, there are a lot of materials students are working with, I just like to write down here what materials I will need for each day so that I can make sure I have everything ready to go. Um, we know that as teachers, if we're scrambling for materials or looking for different papers or where are the decks that I need, that when students are not engaged in learning because I'm looking around for my materials, then behavior issues go up. So I want to try to be prepared ahead of time and have all that ready to go. So this is a lot of information to plan for a week's of worth of lessons, but it's important that we do this work ahead of time so that when we are in that 30 minute section of learning with students, that we can really make the most of this structured literacy instruction. Remember, if you have any questions about the ad, uh, advanced section of reading readiness, you can always turn to your manual or the reading readiness training materials.